Good morning. I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for March 8th, 2023. Well, what can you say when, when we talk about fake news and the, the lying media? Uh, there was a story published yesterday by the New York Times, which is a transparent piece of disinformation on the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines, claiming, quote, new evidence, unquote, reviewed by, quote, intelligence officials, unquote, which points to a previously unknown phantom group made up of, quote, most likely Ukrainian or Russian nationals, unquote. Uh, here's the paragraph which summarizes the so-called new evidence. And I'm sure when you hear this, it becomes clear that this is not a story. This is a fake. Uh, quote, officials who have reviewed the intelligence said they believed the saboteurs were most likely Ukrainian or Russian nationals or some combination of the two. U.S. officials said no American or British nationals were involved. The explosives were, quote, most likely planted with the help of experienced divers who did not appear to be working for military or intelligence services, U.S. officials who have reviewed the new intelligence said. But it is possible that the perpetrators received specialized government training in the past, unquote. Now, they go on to say that this is a, a new lead, but they said, quote, there are no firm conclusions about it, unquote. And they continue saying, quote, leaving open the possibility that the operation might have been conducted off the books by a proxy force with connections to the Ukrainian government or its security services. Now, who might that be? Who would the proxy force be? Sounds a lot like the U.S. and NATO. Now, this is clearly a weak attempt to divert attention away from Seymour Hersh's reporting. Hersh, as you know, reported that from an inside source, he was told that a team of Biden administration officials, uh, with the approval of President Biden himself, conducted the sabotage. Now, Hersh is an acclaimed reporter with a deserved reputation for integrity, unlike U.S. intelligence sources. Now, there are many questions raised by this publication of the so-called new evidence. So let's take up one of the most obvious questions. Why release this report now? It's nearly six months past the day of the explosions on the Nord Sea pipelines. There have been investigations by several governments, including Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. Uh, all they reported in their initial investigation, is that Russia did not do it, uh, which is that the initial line by the U.S. that Russia probably did it was false. So why now put out this new intelligence? Well, or so-called intelligence. Let's look at three factors. Uh, first of all, there's a growing anti-war movement, which is connecting with demonstrations against EU governments and NATO generally. Uh, yesterday, for example, 1.3 million people were out in the streets in France. The subject was the pension reform, the austerity program pushed through by Macron. But there were also indications of anti-NATO sentiment, opposition to France, sending or spending money on the war in Ukraine while trying to cut the pensions of retired workers in France. In Greece, there were mass demonstrations that are planned for today over the train crash that occurred as a result, uh, that train uh, railroad official, union officials are saying, was the result of austerity and budget cuts and privatization of the rail system. And this was a train crash, a horrible one, which killed, I think, of more than 50 people. One of the demands of the uh, demonstrators is a full investigation of what happened. In Berlin, uh, a week and a half ago, 50,000 people demonstrated in front of the Brandenburg Gate, demanding an investigation of the Nord Sea pipeline. What, what did Schultz know and when did he know it? In addition to an end to funding for the Ukraine war. And in the U.S., momentum is building with the demonstrations uh, on February 19th, 
But then now there's a move in the U.S. Congress against U.S. imperial policies of keeping troops in Syria. There'll be a, a vote on that uh, today or tomorrow, and if the, just, I'll come back to that in a moment. But meanwhile, $100 billion plus for the war in Ukraine and austerity for the U.S. population. So this is building the momentum. Uh, and then, of course, these demonstrations have been fed by the Hearst story. So under the, that, that could explain why the New York Times chose to put out this new evidence today or yesterday. Now, secondly, the second factor, the secrecy surrounding the visit to the United States by Chancellor Schultz last Saturday. Uh, this is really strange. He made a one-day trip for closed-door discussions that lasted just a little more than an hour. There were some statements before the meeting, which included the, the usual talking points, uh, the need to show continuing global solidarity. This is Biden's line of a global coalition to defend Kiev for, quote, as long as it takes, unquote, adding this is, quote, it is, quote, very important that we acted together, which is something Schultz keeps saying. Now, why fly to the United States and have a closed door meeting to say these things, which are uh, material that's already been out there. It's already been discussed. These are the standard cliches. After the meeting, there was no joint press conference, no communique. So the question is, what did they discuss? Why have a face-to-face -face meeting when they could have discussed these platitudes over the phone? Last Saturday on the Manhattan Project weekly program, a uh, former CIA analyst and veteran uh, peace activist Ray McGovern presented his hypothesis, and he joked that this is a, quote, conspiracy theory, but if you listen to what he said, it, it makes a lot of sense. He said the, the, the why the two met, this, quote, cries out for an explanation, unquote, uh, and he said that this goes back in his mind to the February 7th, 2022 joint appearance by Schultz with Biden, when Biden said, don't worry, we'll take care of the Nord Stream pipelines. We'll shut it down. And when challenged on that, he said, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. Now, McGovern said, maybe the private conversation Schultz had with Biden was an attempt at self-protection, given the growing mood of the German people against the war. Uh, when Schultz said, we do everything together, McGovern said, it's legitimate for the German people to ask him, did you blow up the Nord Stream pipelines together? Did President Biden tell you it was going to happen on the 7th of February and he promised to do it? And McGovern continued, he said, perhaps Schultz said to Biden, please, Joe, don't tell anybody that you told me you were going to blow up these things. I'm pretending I didn't know about this. If it comes out that you told me, my government might not survive. Now, I, I think that's a very possible scenario that Ray McGovern laid out. And then this brings us to the third factor. The war in Ukraine against Russia is not going very well. We have NATO and Zelensky with the insistence that Bakhmut must be held despite the huge losses of Ukrainian forces. And yes, the Russians are losing forces also, but the Russians have more more coming in, and the Ukrainians are down to their last uh, men. The situation for Ukraine is becoming militarily desperate, even with all the weapons NATO is delivering. So why fight to the last Ukrainian? Why not negotiate? It's clear you can't, Ukraine can't win. And this brings us to a, a second hypothesis from Ray McGovern. He tweeted out yesterday that the New York Times story is, quote, ludicrous. But is this new straw in the wind show that U.S. officials are preparing to throw Zelensky under the bus? Well, okay, this is speculation, but it's based on an educated hypothesis from Ray, who remembered 27 years in the CIA, uh, and at one point he was one of the briefers, the CIA briefers of President Reagan. This raises the question, when will Western officials acknowledge 
that their effort to dismember Russia using Ukraine as the battering ram cannot succeed without triggering a larger world war that could become a nuclear war. Well, that's the danger we face. But as this new evidence emerges, it's clear that something else is going on than a super sleuth digging up the story of the big mystery of who blew up the Nord Stream pipelines. You can join us to help dismantle this war machine. That's what the Schiller Institute and the LaRouche Organization are engaged in. And today you can join in a particular effort to pass the resolution from Congressman Matt Gates that would force the U.S. to remove troops from Syria who are there illegally, unconstitutionally, without an invitation from the Syrian government. There'll be a link at the bottom of the description page about what you can do, including a phone number to the congressional switchboard you can call. So thanks for joining me today. Share this video. Help get the word out. Let's dismantle the war machine.